Hi, Assalamualaikum. So, this lecture is on fundamentals of vibrations and the definition of simple harmonic motion where we have three learning objectives where we want to know uh, to determine if a vibration motion can be classified as simple harmonic motion. Uh, looking into how we represent this in terms of uh, the trigonometry and the complex forms and look into the basic terminology. Uh, as an introduction, the oscillatory motion may repeat itself regularly as in the case of a simple pendulum or it may display considerable irregularity as in earthquakes. So there is a... Um, what we call when the motion is repeated in equal intervals of time tau, so it is uh, called periodic mo motion. So uh, the variable is tau, and the repetition time tau is all is called the uh, period of oscillation, and it is given uh, in terms of relationship with the frequency. Frequency is one over tau. If the motion is designated by the time function xt, then any periodic motion must satisfy this relationship. So let us take a look at um, if physically how it actually moves. When you actually have a mass hanging uh, on a spring like this, and you actually release it, so it will actually create this periodic motion. And this is one of the simplest type of periodic motion where you can see that it actually has a single frequency and it can be demonstrated as uh, in the figure so if mass is displaced from its rest and released so it will actually oscillate up and down so that is how we do it uh, basically uh, to look at it physically and the motion of the mass can be expressed as this expression when you have your x equals to a sine 2 pi t over tau or actually uh, 2 pi uh, f t or omega t. So a is what we call the amplitude of oscillation and tau is the period and the motion is repeated when t is equals to tau. So this is an, uh, a representation uh, of the harmonic motion okay so you can actually see if you actually uh, uh, move uh, the the mass just now uh, the the peak in this case or the amplitudes is what we call a and uh, from one point uh, to the other as shown in the figure okay so this part here is what we call uh, one cycle of two pi and it has what we call the angular speed of the line OP designated as omega. And the displacement X can be written as A sine omega T. Okay, you can also represent it as uh, this point here, P, and uh, this angle here as theta or omega T. So this is an, uh, uh, how we actually define the simple harmonic motion. And the quantity omega is measured in radians per second and is referred to as the circular angular frequency. Uh, since the motion repeats itself every 2 pi radian, we have the relationship of omega is equal to 2 pi over tau or we can also write it as 2 pi f. So tau is the period, whereas uh, your f is the frequency of the harmonic motion. If you actually uh, define it uh, as the displacement as x equals to a sine omega t, you can also write it in terms of velocity and also acceleration. So uh, you can see how you get these expressions is by taking the first derivative, of your x and acceleration is when you actually take the second derivative of your x. So from there you can also see there is a relationship between your x and your x double dot where from the previous slide you can really see that these expressions a sine omega t is also 
this a sine omega t is also your x. So basically, your x double dot is also equals to negative omega square x. So that's why you can see here, in terms of the relationship between x and uh, x double dot is basically your x double dot is equals to negative omega square x. So you can see that it's opposite. If this point is uh, at the positive side, this will go negative. And there is a difference between the amplitude of negative omega square. So if your x is a, the amplitude is a. So here the amplitude is omega square. With the negative notation means it's opposite direction. So the acceleration, um, in conclusion, you can actually write. If you have a problem where it gives you acceleration, you can actually uh, get back what is your displacement or vice versa. This is the relationship that you can use when you have simple harmonic motion. As Newton's second law states that acceleration is proportional to the force, harmonic motion can be expected with linear spring with force varying as kx. Now let us take a look at a complex form of simple harmonic motion. So we have the trigonometric trigonometric functions of sine and cosine which are related to this exponential function by Euler's equation given as this equation. A vector of amplitude z rotating at a constant angular speed of omega, so you can see in, in the figure, it can be represented as a complex quantity a in the argon diagram. So this is the diagram you can see here. So you can actually write the relationship uh, between Z and uh, A uh, and the uh, omega, basically where your Z is equals to A, E, I, omega, T, where Z is referred to as the complex sinusoid. Maybe you have seen this earlier in your math or your calculus. You can also write an exponential function of uh, an imaginary number can be written in a sine and cosine function as such. So from there, from the above figure, it shows that z and its conjugate, z star, which is rotating in the negative direction with an angular speed of negative omega. From this diagram, it is seen that the real component x is expressed in terms of z and z star but is by the equation so you can actually write your x is equals to half z plus z um, conjugate which is equals to a cosine omega t which is actually the real part of your functions or the quantity z so some of the rules that you can use when you have a harmonic uh, motion is by using this a complex relationship, if you want to add the signals or the waves of Z1 and Z2, then you can actually uh, add the exponential functions. If you divide, then you actually uh, um, minus uh, the difference uh, between the power of your exponential. If it's power, then uh, you can actually write in terms of uh, this expressions. So these are some of the things if you are dealing with harmonic motions you can actually apply the complex numbers uh, rules. Some of the uh, vibration terminology that you may want to know when you deal with simple harmonic motion uh, is actually what we call a uh, peak value. Okay, peak value is the maximum displacement or magnitude A which usually indicates the maximum stress that the vibrating part is undergoing. Other terminology, maybe they can be useful or you can actually find in any uh, vibration uh, monitoring equipments. 
uh, sometimes we call it average value, okay, which is x bar, is basically given by this equation, and it indicates a steady state or static value, somewhat like uh, if you're actually um, applying an electrical signal, is kind of like the DC value of an electrical current. So quite similarly, uh, vi vibration is also is in the form of signal, very similar to electrical signals. So um, this average value is kind of like a DC value. So for example, the average value of complete cycle of sine wave is zero, whereas its average value for a half cycle is, however, is 0 0.6378. Okay, another um, quite common term that we use in measuring vibration is what we call the mean square value or uh, denoted as x bar square. So according to this, it is actually the integration of x square uh, t dt. And if you actually simplify the expressions is actually half of your peak square, half a square. One of the uh, also a popular term that uh, people use in vibration uh, measurement is what we call the root mean square, RMS. Okay, you might you must have heard this in your electrical measurements as well. Uh, a RMS is actually 0 0.707 times a or the peak. So vibration instrument generally measures root mean square vibration amplitudes in terms of displacement, velocity, or accelerations. Okay. Since the peak value of the velocity and acceleration are multiples of the circular frequency times the displacement amplitude, these three basic quantities often differ in value by an order of magnitude. For systems with circular frequency omega larger than 1 radian per second, the relative amplitude of the velocity response is larger than the displacement by a multiple of omega and the uh, acceleration response is larger by a multiple of omega square. So we have seen in the previous graph, um, in the uh, previous slides. So for the system uh, with circular frequency less than 1 radian per second, the velocity and acceleration have smaller relative amplitudes than the displacement. Okay, the common units. What are the common units uh, used? Basically, uh, vibrations, amplitudes, and RMS values uh, is measured using decibels, dB. So this is quite common where it is actually a logarithmic unit. It compresses or expands the scale. So basically, one dB, uh, a dB is equal to ten log uh, p over p one over p two. Or in terms of uh, displacement, okay, you can also write ten log ten x one over x two square. Uh, if you bring the x two, you times x two to the front you become 20 log 10, okay? This is another way of writing it if you want to remove uh, remove the power, all right? So you end up with 20 log 10, x1 over x2. So the equation will be based on the ratio of the square of the amplitudes of two signals, okay? So either in terms of uh, power, okay? P is power and x is the uh, displacement. So cycle is another way of representing a vibration. Uh, it is actually a movement of vibrating body from its equilibrium position to its extreme position in one direction, then to the equilibrium position, then to its extreme position in other direction, and back to the equilibrium position. So you can actually see here uh, where you can see this part here is the first... Uh, wave here a2 and then another one this one a1 so you can actually see if you uh, put it in this argon diagram uh, how it actually moves uh, in a circle so one revolution angular displacement of two pi radians of the pin p or one revolution of a vector op constitute a 
cycle. Okay. So we've talked about A. What is A? Which is amplitude. Tau is the period of oscillation. So it is equal to the time required for a vector OP to rotate through an angle to 2 pi. So basically, uh, it's still the same if you represent it as a circle as well. Your tau uh, is equal to 2 pi over omega. And frequency of oscillation F is defined as number of cycles per unit and measured in hertz so make sure you are very familiar or you can memorize this relationship of f and omega where your f is actually the unit is hertz uh, whereas your omega is basically in radian per second so make sure you're going to use this throughout this course There is another term what we call phase angle. So what is this phase angle? Phase angle is the difference in time between two events such as the zero crossing of two waveforms. So you can actually see this. This is what we uh, define as phase angle when you have these two waves. Yeah? Okay, between these two waves, A1 and A, A2. It is expressed in radians as the time between two events divided by the period of uh, 2 pi. Let us take a look at uh, example 1 related to some of these definitions. You have learned about uh, some of the terminologies and also the relationship between acceleration and also uh, displacement. So in this case, uh, the maximum uh, it gives here Okay, basically, when you want to write uh, this, you have to uh, read the problem and list down what are the uh, variables given. It says here the maximum displacement and the maximum acceleration of the foundation of a centrifugal pump were found to be 0.25 and 0.4 g. So what are those variables? So basically, maximum displacement is 0.25. 0.25 mm, so you know that x max, okay, I call x max, equals to 0 0.25, is in millimeter, so you have to convert it to meter, so 10 to the minus 3 meter, so meter is the standard unit, you always need to use in terms of standard unit. The second part is the maximum acceleration, so I call it x max, okay, so x max is equals to 0 0.4 g so your g is not gram but g is meter per second square okay which is your acceleration so what you want to find basically you want to find the operating speed of the pump so normally when we say operating speed of the pump uh, is basically your from your omega where uh, normally pump, we have to express it in terms of RPM. So how do you solve for this? So uh, you know that x and x uh, max can be related uh, through these expressions, which we already covered in our previous slides. Okay, if, you, if I can uh, recap previously, uh, we have shown here in slides number 7, where your x double dot is equal to negative omega square x. So that's how we get this uh, expression. You can refer to slide 7. From the above equation, we solve for the angular frequency. So you know that you can solve for your omega here. Uh, so you're using the... Uh, take note that g refers to your 9.81, which is gravitational uh, forces. Sorry, gravitational acceleration. Uh, so we have uh, your, uh, you can calculate your omega. So from your omega, you can convert to RPM. So make sure you take note that uh, in order to convert to RPM, you have to times 60 over uh, 2 pi. Yeah. So from there, you can actually get in terms of RPM. So, okay, that's all uh, for this lecture. Thank you very much.